ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصل فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things that you invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray Every misguidance is in the hellfire from Ma'amma Ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He repeatedly reminds us in the Qur'an, and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu repeatedly reminded us through His ahadith about the open, true, clear enemy to each and every one of us. And it is shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمْ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوهُ مُبِينَ Allah says, what means did I not order for you, O children of Adam, that you should not worship shaitan? Verily, he is a plain enemy to you. Plain, outspoken, clear, no doubt that he is an enemy to each and every one of us. وَأَنْ عَبُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And that you should worship me alone, without any partners. يعني worship Allah, alone with no partners. Tawheed, the fundamental thing that shaitan, his biggest aim is to get us to leave. To get us to commit shirk rather than just to worship Allah alone in truth without partners. That is the straight path. وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ And indeed he, shaitan, Satan, he led many astray, a great multitude of you. Did you not then understand? Shaitan is the open enemy, the clear enemy. Allah mentions him throughout the Qur'an in many, many ayat. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطَوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعُوا خُطَوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته ما زكى منكم من أحد أبدا ولكن الله يزكي من يشاء والله سميع عليم. Allah says what means all you who believe. Again when Allah begins يا أيها الذين آمنوا this is a call out to someone who wants to be a believer in the eyes of Allah يوم القيامة. They want to be judged by Allah as a believer. When Allah calls us out, you should be listening, full attention. I want to fulfill this, what's going to come out, because I want to be from the believers. Follow not the footsteps of shaitan. His call to following the desires and the lusts, to sin and transgression, disregarding Allah's commandments. Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan, and whoever follows the footsteps of shaitan, then verily, he's only commanding you with al-fahsha, to commit indecency, immoral actions, al-munkar, to commit disbelief and polytheism, to do evil, to do wicked deeds, to speak about what is haram, to do what is haram, what is evil. And, it, and it, had it not been for the grace of Allah and His mercy on you, 
Not one of you would have ever been pure from sins. Not one of us would ever be forgiven for the sins we had if it wasn't for Allah's rahmah. But Allah purifies and guides to Islam whom He wills. And Allah is the all-hearer, the all-knower. Allah says, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوْ حِزْدَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what means surely shaitan is an enemy to you. There's no hiding. There's no he might be. He is a plain and open enemy to each and every one of us. To our families, to our friends, to society, to the entire world. Shaitan is an enemy to you, so treat him as an enemy. He only invites his followers that they may become the dwellers of the blazing fire. He may give you some temporary pleasure in this life because he gets you to follow your lusts or your desires. But all he's leading you to is a dwelling of potential eternity or a long time or some time in the, in the hellfire. So he said, فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوا Treat him as an enemy. Now because we don't see shaitan, maybe we ignore him or we think he's, he's not as strong as we want to admit he is. So now take this enemy, put him into a human form. Put him at the doorstep of your door to your house. Would you let him in? You would keep it closed. Would you let him talk to your children or your spouse? You wouldn't do such a thing. You'd get your arms, you'd get your weapons, you'd call the cops. You'd do whatever you got to do to get this enemy away from you and your family and your friends. This is how you have to treat shaitan. Allah didn't mention Shaitan was as a metaphor, as a maybe something that exists, or as a, a, a comparison. He exists. And his life, his mission, his goal is to get us to follow into disobe- fall into disobedience like he did. So treat him as an enemy. Allah said, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah says, what means that if an evil whisper comes to you from shaitan, anything to do evil, anything to do haram or say haram, then seek refuge with Allah from shaitan. Verily, He is the all-hear, the all-knower. Turn to Allah so you're safeguarded, so you can protect yourself from falling into pleasing shaitan instead of pleasing Allah. When any evil whisper comes to you, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Allah says what means verily those who are the muttaqoon, those who are pious, and Allah He mentions He loves the muttaqoon. Allah loves those who have taqwa, who are cautious with their deen, putting a barrier between themselves and the punishment of Allah by obedience, by following what Allah commanded and staying away from what He forbade. Those who are the muttaqoon, when an evil thought comes to them from shaitan, they remember Allah, and indeed they then are set aright. Remember your Lord. Because His, His pleasure, His guidance, His mercy, that is where the everlasting comfort of the heart, the peace, the serenity will come to you. And ain't in following your desires. We've all learned that the wrong way, the hard way, throughout our lives. That that fulfillment of those desires is a temporary pleasure and it usually leads you to more sadness, more harm, more depression, more anxiety, more this, more that. Anything that's distanced from Allah and His pleasure. وَأَخْوَانُهُمْ يَمُدُّونَهُمْ فِي الْغَيِّ ثُمَّ لَا يُقْصِرُونَ Allah says what means, and as for their brothers, the devils, they, the other shayateen, they plunge them deeper into air and they never stop short. They'll never stop short. They'll think you're deep into air, and you think you can't get any deeper into problems, into, into air, into distancing yourself from Allah and His Rahmah. They want you to plunge even further down. And they ain't gonna stop. You'll get more mercy from your human enemy than you will from shaitan and his, and his, and his soldiers. Allah says in Surah Al-Hijr, قَالَ رَبِّي بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزَيَّنَنَّ لَهُمْ Allah says what means Iblis, Satan, he said, Oh my Lord, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error from them, from mankind on the earth, and I shall mislead them all. He claimed Allah misled him, and Allah does not mislead. Anyway, Allah gives, and it is upon you to follow your desires or to follow the path of Tawheed. 
and the correct aqidah of the Salaf al Salah for righteous predecessors. So he turned it around and he said, Give me some respite, give me some time, so I can get them to follow in my footsteps. Except your chosen guided slaves amongst them. At least he knew these were going to be the hard ones to get. The ones whom Allah chooses to keep guided. Because the guidance truly is based upon Allah. Allah is the one who guides to the straight path. Allah said, this is the way which will lead straight to me. The correct way. Knowing at least chose another way. In the Ibadi Laysa Laka Alayhim Sultan, Illa Manit Tabaka, Minal Gawin. Certainly you shall have no authority over my slaves, except those who follow you of the Gawin, the Mushrikeen, those who go astray, those who commit criminal acts, the polytheists, the evildoers. So when we indulge in that in this dunya, all we're doing is opening ourselves up to follow Shaytan and not be on the straight path that Allah is calling us to. Allah says, الشيطان يعدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعدكم مغفرة منه ورحمة وفضلة والله واسع عليم Allah says what means shaytan, Satan, he threatens you with poverty so that you follow him and he leads you astray. Shaytan, he threatens you or he orders you to commit al-fahsha, evil deeds, uh, evil deeds, illegal intimate acts, sins as a whole. Whereas Allah, he promises you forgiveness from himself, and a bounty, and Allah is sufficient for all of his creatures' needs, all knower. There are more ayat. There are more hadith. So we know shaitan exists. We know he's the plain and open enemy. And he's so evil, that even when you're a baby, your first breaths coming into this world out of the womb of your mother, he's already getting at you. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ما من مولود يولد إلا نقصه الشيطان فيستهل صارخا من نقصة الشيطان إلا ابن مريم وأمه ثم قال أبو هريرة أقرأوا إن شئتم وإني أعيدها بك وضريتها من الشيطان الرجيم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim No child is born but he's poked and pained by shaytan at birth and he begins to weep because of this. We're thinking maybe the baby's crying because he came out of the womb of his mother. Shaitan's already at it. This innocent baby that's born with no sin, unlike others who think the baby's born with sin in Islam, you're not born with any sins. Alhamdulillah. You've done nothing wrong. You, haven't, you don't even have the age of discernment to have done anything wrong. But right then and there, Shaitan's already poking at the baby poking him, trying to get into his head, trying to cause him some discomfort. And this happened to everyone except the son of Mary, Maryam, and his mother. To the son of Isa, uh, Afram, the son of Maryam, Isa, السلام, Prophet Jesus, السلام, and his mother, Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, said, then recite, if you wish, I seek protection for her and her offspring against Satan the accursed. Because this was the dua of the mother of Maryam. For her Yani daughter to be and any offspring she would have. So read this dua for your children as well. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, shaitan is your enemy. Public enemy number one. From day one. And he's not going to get bored if you don't listen to him. He's going to keep coming at you. He's patient. We're not. Shaitan is patient. And his soldiers are patient. And they'll come back and keep trying and trying. And they'll be patient. They'll let you indulge in, in good times. And they'll... Look for any opening of weakness so they can come and attack you. Waiting and waiting and waiting on every turn, every corner, every outpost, every output, outpost, waiting to attack. So do not ignore him. He never gives up. He wants you to fall like he did. So upon you is to treat him as an enemy in every aspect of your life. And there are many places Shaytan tries to attack, wanting us to fall. Places, certain conducts, Plots, you name it, seek refuge with Allah from shaitan always. And keep this wet on your tongue. So we look to the sunnah, uh, many, many various aspects where shaitan's involved that we ignore. Or we don't ever acknowledge. And we need to take him as an enemy, to take him as an enemy, to stop attacking us, or to at least fend him off. You have to be aware of these times. 
عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعقد الشيطان على قافية رأس أحدكم إذا هو نام ثلاث عقد يضرب كل عقدة ما كانها عليك ليل طويلة فارقد فإن استيقظ فذكر الله أن حلت عقدة فإن توضع فإن توضع أن حلت عقدة فإن صلى أن حلت عقده كلها فأصبح نشيطا طيب النفس وإلا أصبح خبيث 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 النفس كسنانا رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith during your sleep shaitan he comes and he try he ties three knots at the back of your head at the back of your neck of each and every one of you and he breathes the following words into each knot the night is long so sleep keep on sleeping and relax three knots at the back of the neck tied and shaitan is invoking this upon you and he's calling for you to sleep to be lazy to not wake up why wanting you to not wake up for the hajj wanting you to not wake up make wudu pray fajr right so this is what he does he says the night is long so keep on sleeping if that person wakes up and he remembers allah alhamdulillah alladhi hada alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'd ma amatna wa ilayhi nashur praise be to allah who gave us life after death and to him is the return and the resurrection Whoever does this, one of those knots gets undone. He goes and makes wudu, the second knot gets undone. He goes and prays, the third knot gets undone. All of the knots are undone, and he gets up in the morning lively and in good spirits. Otherwise, he gets up in low spirits and lethargic or lazy. So even when you're asleep, shaitan's plotting. He's attacking. So stop him by seeking refuge. Set those alarm clocks. Do what you have to do to get up and undo those knots that shaitan ties behind your neck. When one of you wakes up, shaitan starts attacking. But you can stop him. It was narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا اسْتَيْقَذَ أَحَدَكُمْ مِنْ مَنَامِهِ فَتَوَضَّ فَلْيَسْتَنْفِرْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَبِيتُ عَلَى خَيْشُومِهِ رواه النساء وهذا حديث صحيح. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when any of you wakes up, if you sleep at any time and you wake up perform a wudu, then let him sniff water in his nose and blow it out three times. So if you're getting up and you make wudu, it's part of the wudu. But if you get up and you're not planning to make wudu for whatever reason, then you should at least inhale water into your nose, istinshah, and istinthar blow it out three times. Because shaitan, he spends the night in the nose. We don't see this. You may not feel it. It may not occur to you. But this is shaitan planting his seeds inside of your body, trying to make sure that you follow him. When leaving your home, shaitan is attacking. But you can defend yourself and arm yourself. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال يعني إذا خرج من بيته بسم الله توكلت على الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله يقول له كفيت ووقيت وتن وتنحى عنه الشيطان رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث صحيح. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever says when he leaves his house بسم الله in the name of Allah توكلت على الله I put my trust in Allah I rely upon Allah. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ That there's no power or might, but with Allah, it will be said to him, you have been sufficed. You have been protected, and the devils will stay far away from him. Protect yourself. Shaitan's an open enemy. If you knew someone of your physical enemies from the humans was out and about, you would be taking this precaution every time you took a footstep out of your home. Before you got in your car. When you draw looking all around, that's how you would treat a real enemy. So treat shaitan as such. When you're eating and drinking, when you're, when you're, uh, يعني, do not let shaitan in. عن جابر بن عبد الله قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا دخل الرجل بيته فذكر الله عند دخوله وعند طعامه قال الشيطان لا مبيت لكم ولا عشاء وإذا دخل فلم يذكر الله عند دخوله قال الشيطان أدركتم 
أدركتم المبيت فإذا لم يذكر الله عند طعامه قال أدركتم المبيت والعشاء رواه أبو داود وهذا حديث صحه الشيخ الألباني رحمه الله Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was heard to have said when a man enters his house and he mentions Allah's name upon entering and upon eating his food mentioning these two things when you enter the house Bismillah wa lajna with Allah we return with Bismillah kharajna and with Allah we had left our home wa ala rabbana tawakkalna and on our Lord do we put our trust whoever says this when they enter this house and says Bismillah before eating their food the devil says shaitan says you have no place to spend the night with this person in this home you have no place to sit for a meal but when he enters without mentioning Allah's name on entering the devil says you have found a place to spend the night and if he doesn't mention bismillah before he eats he will say you have found a place to spend the night and an evening meal remember Allah and you will fend off shaitan look at all of these things in the sunnah about things to do to fend off shaitan to protect yourself from him and his attacks eating and drinking giving and taking it was narrated from Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ليأكل أحدكم بيمينه ولا يشرب بيمينه ولا يأكل بيمينه ولا يأكل بيمينه فإن الشيطان يأكل بشماله ويشرب بشماله ويعطي بشماله ويأخذ بشماله. This hadith which is صحيح in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, let one of you eat with his right hand. Till this day, some simple Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, and you see the people neglecting it, and you don't want to teach it to your children. And some will say, oh, the child's left-handed. So what? Learn to eat with your right hand. Look at this hadith. Who do you want them to emulate and to follow? What is important to you? Of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, let one of you eat with his right hand. Drink with your right hand. Give with your right hand. Salam. Money. Transactions. Take with your right hand. Salam. Money. Transactions. Whatever is being handed to you. Because why? Because shaitan, he eats with his left hand. If you want to emulate him, go ahead and eat with your left hand. He drinks with his left hand. You want to emulate shaitan, drink with your left hand. He gives and he takes with his left hand. These are the things when we don't go back to our deen, when we don't know our deen, we are letting shaitan creep around us. We're imitating him in ways that give him a power over us in our struggle against him that we don't acknowledge and we don't see. And the shaitan alakum adu fatakhiduhu adu. Shaitan is an open enemy to you. He ain't hiding. He hates you and he wants you to follow him. So treat him as an enemy. Aqulu qali hadu sakhir Allah liyu lakum. Ida Allah yaghfir lakum dhanuna. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما دي brothers and sisters in Islam شيطان is an enemy public enemy number one your enemy your children's enemy your spouse's enemy your parents enemy your friends enemy your neighbors enemy everybody in the world's enemy some he has taken and they have followed him. And we don't want to follow into those footsteps. Why? Because he denied one sajda that Allah commanded with him. For him will be the hellfire for eternity. Do not follow in those footsteps. Learn your deen so you can arm yourself with everything to keep shaitan away from you and your families. When you yawn, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حديث أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه قال التثاؤب من الشيطان فإذا تثاؤب أحدكم فليردّه ما استطاع فإن أحدكم إذا قال ها ضحك الشيطان رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said yawning is from the shaytan. He wants you to be lazy. He wants you to be tired. You're more likely to say something that you don't that isn't correct. You're more likely to leave off something that you should be doing because of that fatigue. Yawning is from the shaytan. If any of you yawns, let him check his yawning. Try to restrain it. Hold back the sound. In another hadith, cover his mouth. As much as possible, or if you, if any of you, during the act of yawning, make a noise with it, shaitan laughs at you. He laughs at you. Uh, 
any noise that comes out because of that yawn. He loves it. This hadith is in Bukhari. When you get angry, Atiyah and Atiyah, radiallahu anhu, qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-ghadab min al-shaytan, wa inna al-shaytan khulaqa min al-nar, wa inna ma tutfi' al-nar bil-ma' fa idha ghadab ahadakum falyatwadda' Ruahu Abu Dawood, wa hadha hadithun hasan, according to Ibn Hajar. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, barely anger comes from shaytan. Shaytan is a jinn, he is created from fire. And what puts out a fire? But water. So if you get angry, make wudu, so you can turn off that flame. When you're getting angry, when you're raging, it's all shaitan, he's stirring you up from the inside. Yet you're thinking it's the person in front of you just. It's all shaitan. And you're pleasing him, and displeasing your Lord. Walking in one shoe, shaitan is attacking. Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, لا يمشي أحدكم في نعل واحدة ليحفه, ليحفهما جميعا أو لينعلهما جميعا The Prophet وسلم, he said, none of you should walk wearing only one shoe. He should put on either both shoes or put on no shoes whatsoever. This hadith was in Bukhari in another narration it mentions, indeed shaytan, he walks in one shoe. Do not imitate it. And it's simple. These might be little to you. You might think these are small things. Why do you make it? This is the sunnah of the best of mankind. And all of it comes into play. So you either put on both slippers, both shoes, or you don't have any on. No hopping on one throughout the house. Follow the sunnah of your messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two more aspects to acknowledge. Being alone with someone from the opposite gender. An Umar. عن النبي عن عمر رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يخل لا يخلون لا يخلون رجل بمرأة إلا كان ثالثهما الشيطان رواه الترمذي عمر رضي الله عنه he narrated in the authentic narration from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said whenever a man is alone with a woman in a room then shaytan is the third and you may think oh I got no attraction to her or I got no attraction to him. You may think nothing's gonna happen, or there's not enough time for something to happen. Shaitan can work wonders that he wants. And it just takes one slip, one denial of how strong he is, that you yeah, need to belittle it in your mind, before you know it, he's taken you by storm. To not be alone with someone from the opposite gender. This is not your mother or your sister, those who are not mahram to you, those you cannot marry. And it doesn't mean that Someone else, oh, I'm not going to marry this person anyway. It doesn't matter. It's, we're talking about no one from blood relations. Should a man be alone with a woman or a woman alone with a man? Except shaitan is the third. And we'll end on this one. An Jabir radiallahu anhu qal. And this was with regard to the spouses. Look it, because shaitan, he sends out his soldiers every day. Go, 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 go. Sending you out. Just like a person sends out his workers. Go and find them. Go sell these products. Right? Just like at a game, sending out concession stands. You go sell all these coats. You go sell all these things. Right? Shaitan, he sends out his workers every day. Right? Jabir radiallahu anhu narrated that Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ إِبْلِيسِ يَدْعُ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ ثُمَّ يَبْعَثُ سَرَايَاهُ فَأَذْنَاهُمْ مِنْهُ مَنْزِلَةً مَنْزِلَةً أَعْظَمُهُمْ فِتْنَةً يُجِيءُ أَحَدَهُمْ فَيَقُولْ فَعَلْتُ كذا وكذا فيقول ما صنعت شيئا فيقول له ما صنعت شيئا قال ثم يجيء أحدهم فيقول ما تركته حتى فرقت بينه وبين امرأته قال فيدنيه منه ويقول نعم أنت قال الأعمش أراه قال فليتزمه This hadith which is صحيح in the sun in the صحيح صحيح مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إبليس he has his throne, he places his throne upon water. Then he sends out his attachments, his detachments, his, his soldiers out for creating dissension. Go and cause this person to drink, this one to steal, this one to do the co cause problems. Then the nearer to him in rank are those who are most notorious and causing the most problems. So they come back and they say, Oh, at least, oh, Shaytan, I caused this person to do such and such a sin. No, it's not the you didn't get him to do nothing even from other big sins. They can come back, I caused this 
person, this man, this female, to do this, to commit that, to drink this, to... You haven't done nothing. Until a person comes back and he says, I have caused dissension. I have caused... Uh, a seed. I planted a seed of discord between a husband and a wife. Causing them to have discord, to fight, to become angry with another. To potentially move towards divorce or get that divorce. Shaitan, he gets this one, he brings him near to him, he says, Ni'ma anta, you've done the best. And in one narration it says, he embraces him. He hugs him. So every time we nitpick with the husband or the wife, every time we choose to have that discord between our spouses, you're pleasing shaitan. He's praising the one who came and sowed those seeds of discord between you two. He's hugging them and embracing them and this one is going to be nearest to him because he's caused what is in at least that's the most problems. So if any of this can get us to remember seeking refuge with Allah from shaitan, to bite our tongue from attacking our spouses, to letting some things go, to yeah, I mean, be careful what battles you pick, to weigh those, to bite your tongue, to control yourself when you go to sleep, to remember Allah, and when you wake up, and when you eat, and when you enter your home, and when you leave your home, and when you enter the masajid, when you can do that, you'll treat shaitan as the enemy that he is. Allah, he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tkhulu fi silmi kafa, wa la tattabu khutuwaat al-shaytan, innahu lakum a'duun mubin, O you who believe, enter perfectly into Islam. Obey all of the rules and regulations of this deen, and follow not the footsteps of shaytan, verily, he is to you a plain enemy. May Allah... Make us from those who are protected from shaitan and his plots and allow us to fulfill the sunnah. Remember Allah to protect us from his evil. Allahumma khalil muslimin wa muslimat wa mu'minin wa mu'minat al ahyaat minhum al amwat innaka anta sami'an qalib al-mujib al-da'awat ya muqallib al-qulub thad al-qulub al-ala dinik ya muqallib al-qulub thad al-qulub al-ala dinik ya muqallib al-qulub thad al-qulub al-ala dinik subhana rabbika rabbil al-azati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala amina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in